Welcome back to the channel. This video is on environmental science. We're looking at unit two, which is ecosystems and environment. And we're looking into the predator prey relationship, which is symbiotic, which means they work together. They are intrinsically and naturally connected to each other, the predator and the prey. In this video, we're looking at the different functions of both and looking how this relates to other parts of ecology and relationships and the environment. This is the Earth Science Classroom. For this symbiotic relationship, a graph is a great way to start off the conversation or the information about prey to prey relationships. And you can even discuss different kinds of predators and prey based on their trophic level, their feeding level, based on their position within the food web or food chain. Are they directly eating or consuming the trophic level below or is it a multiple level consumption? Is it an apex predator versus a second or third consumer? So all these different aspects of the ecological food chain and energy pyramid can be discussed just simply from picking which predator and which prey to look at in terms of this relationship and this pattern. So a graph is a great way to show patterns and show relationships. And on the two Y axes on the left, you have predator numbers or population. And on the right, you have the prey population. You see the prey population is a magnitude larger than predator based on there needs to be larger amounts of biomass the lower you are in the energy pyramid so there's been more prey than predator to maintain this relationship and maintain the balance between these two species so along the x-axis we have time so time is going to continue as this relationship unfolds between the predator and the prey. So what you have is this blue line showing the prey, the red line showing the predator, and you see this opposite balance unfold where you have initially a high amount of prey. And consequently, you have an increasing amount of predators. So the predator is going to start a low number, a low population, and that would allow the prey to reproduce without being consumed and reproduce and have a larger population over each generation, thus increasing population exponentially as long as the environment allows it, the carrying capacity. So that as the population of prey increases, you also have the consequent or concurrent population of predators also increase as a viable and plentiful food source is on offer for the predators to maintain energy and reproduce and respire as normal from generation to generation. Then you have this crossover effect where the population of predators maintains an increase. However, as there's more predators, the natural response is to have a declining or decreasing population of prey. So this pattern of rising prey and then a little lag time within the environment, within the resurgence of the predator population, a lag time would exist and there would be an increase in predator population. And then this would then flip and you'd have the death of many predators as there are less prey to feed upon. Therefore, the carrying capacity is going to change based on the predator's main source of food and it will decline in population and that will also allow a resurgence or resilience to repopulate in terms of the prey and you have this resurgence of prey and the cycle will continue as long as the environment and the limiting factors exist in balance or in equilibrium. Discussing this symbolic relationship in terms of one predator and one prey and the pattern of population increase and decrease over time based on consumption of the prey from the predator. This is fantastic, great way to explain these natural balances that occur in environments, in food chains and food webs. But you can also expand this into different considerations in terms of the environment or the ecosystem. And again, which ecosystem, which food chain or food web can you discuss? You could be more detailed in the case study, looking at certain species or certain times 
based on that environment. And you can look at how the flow of energy is being transferred through the food web. Now, in terms of the considerations, limiting factors are important to consider because they're going to affect the population of both the prey and the predator as that dependent variable, such as the competition for the prey. Is the predator competing with other species for that food source? Is the prey in itself a predator and looking for its own prey, which will then dictate its population and reproduction ability for each generation? Is it also consuming the correct amount of biomass if it's not a predator, if it's a first consumer, if it's going to consume the producer in terms of the autotroph? Also, the carrying capacity of that environment, can it sustain a certain amount of both prey and predator based on, again, availability of resources like food and shelter and mates to reproduce? Also, the fact of changes to a habitat like disturbances and succession and human impact in terms of hunting, in terms of the alterations to a habitat. Look at the broader sense in terms of the climatic conditions any changes over a long period which would impact the environment, impact the vegetation, the soil, the precip, impact the type of biome you have, whether it be a tundra, a desert, a grassland, a savanna, all these things can be taken into account when looking at this simple prey-to-prey -prey relationship. This is the Earth Science Classroom. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like, and share. And if you want more content and videos on Earth Science, please check out my channel.